Hey everybody! Hi, it's me again, Miss Latoya Daldo Burger, the vice board vice president for Groveport Madison Schools, and I'm so excited to read to you today, Freedom School. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. This book was actually already scanned, so you'll get to see the book a little bit better, and then me. So I'm going to go ahead and actually do it like that. How about that? Yeah, that's how we'll do it. So, Freedom School is by Lisa Klein Ransom and illustrated by James Ransom. Now, being free means we got a lot to, of work to do, work harder than before, and just do that. So, this right here is uh, the inside of the book. Freedom School, and here's a note they hear, from Mother Margaret, who opened her heart and let her stories fill mine, to my children, Jamie, Maya, Malcolm, Lelia, and Nola. Now we went to sleep. We went to sleep slaves and woke up free. Mama told me and my little brother Paul that the day freedom came, she took me and said, Lizzie, being free means we got to work harder than ever before. And don't just mean in the field. Real freedom means rhythmic and writing, which means arithmetic and writing like math and reading and writing. Just like the livestock gobbled up food scraps flung by the master, Mama and Daddy had picked up scraps of learning at church. Preacher gave them pieces of words here and there. Every time Mama and Daddy got a piece, they give me and Paul some too. Put scraps of learning, but scraps of learning don't amount to much. Um, they just made me hungry for more. My mama and daddy, daddy will have to work their crop alone because mama made her mind up that me and Paul were going to that new school just for us. Everybody working in their own way. Lizzie, daddy said, I couldn't wait to get to work on my schooling. For me and Paul went... For, for me and Paul left for school that first morning, Mama told us, walk as fast as you can and stay together. We were not halfway there when we saw white folks along the road. Some said mean things. Where y'all hurry to? I, I heard behind me as we uh, p passed a group of boys. I could feel the hate in their voices. I grabbed Paul's hand and walked faster. Not fast enough, because one rock hit me on my leg and another on my back. I thought of my of my of of mama then. I didn't say any nothing, but I turned I turned, spit and ran. The schoolhouse hadn't been painted yet and it was real plain looking, but never seen a prettier sight inside where long benches and tables of rough wood lined up like rows of cotton in the corner was a crooked uh, fireplace uh, crooked fireplace school smelled new like fresh cut wood raw and sweet and one and, and ones and twos and threes kids came in and sat around us lena ruby then cat and elbert knew uh, knew some of them from the church some from the fields soon the school was filled up the teacher wrote on the board and said her name was Ms. Howard. Her skin was just brown as mine. Her hair was pulled smooth in a bun. When she spoke, it was in smiles. She asked their names. She asked everyone their names. I kept my head down when I said Lizzie, carefully not to look in her eyes so she'd know I was respectful. Then she st started her first lesson. Paul didn't know as many letters as me, so he looked to see what I was doing. Some kids weren't writing in their slates. Miss Howard went over and put her hand on theirs to show them how to make letters. I put my hand on Paul's, and after he got the first couple, he shook my hand off and worked by himself. His letters didn't look like mine. They big and wiggly, but he was proud just the same. The walk home felt longer than the walk coming. We got home in time for Paul to fetch water and get the fire going. I mixed the meal for, for cornbread and made a little bit of greens with the last piece of salt pork. Our mama and daddy were so tired when they got in from the fields, they didn't even seem hungry. 
for we went to we went to bed me and paul copied our letters at the table mama braided my hair and daddy sat across from us sharpening a tool we had to answer so many mama's questions. It was hard to get our practicing done. How many folks showed up? And is there and is the learning hard? Even the questions about the new teacher. What kind of dress she wear? Some days we got to school, there were lots of seats empty at harvest uh, empty. At harvest time, families needed the extra work to get the crop in. Most of the bigger boys were gone, L lest it rain. We probably wouldn't see them again till winter. I felt, felt sorry for them. It was hard enough to keep up with school, let alone try to catch up on something you never learn. Once we had to turn right around and go back home because Miss Howard said it wasn't safe to be at school that day. But Paul always needed answers, so he marched right up to her and asked, Why can't we stay at school, teacher? Just run home now, Paul, and I'll see you tomorrow. She said, I don't, I don't think she wanted us to see the frown behind her smile. In winter, walking to school got harder. The wind whipped our faces as soon as we stepped out the door. It never let up. Paul had to wear some of Pa's old boots, but they so big, it sounded like we was marching when he walked. Cold weather kept some kids home. I told Paul the white schools got a stove to keep them warm in the winter, not a fireplace. With more wind blowing and the heat coming out, why do white folks get so mad over us getting something they already got, he asked. I didn't have an answer. Sometimes Miss Howard had me to read some of the younger kids. There just wasn't enough of her to go around. I like to pretend I was a teacher, and this was my dress. One day, there was a pounding on the door, and, and, and we all looked up from our work. The room went quiet, and for a moment, Miss Howard didn't move. I wondered if it was one of those white folks. More pounding, and Miss Howard wiped her hands on her dress she tried on a smile and said keep working children instead of working we watched her walk toward the door shadows and voices filled the doorway and miss howard disappeared into the cold through the window i saw our neighbor mr hodges and his two big sons They'd been working next to their daddy all their lives. Miss Hodges' voice got louder. Mr. Hodges' voice got louder. Please, teacher, work's been keeping them in the fields, but if they can just sit in the back a spell, they could learn something, and they can work, help with anything you need around here. Ain't they too, they, ain't they too old? Paul whispered to me. They talked a little while longer, and when Miss Hodges came, when Miss Miss Howard came back, Mr. Hodges' boys were behind her. Their feet cracked and dirty, their hands hanging, heads hanging down. They walked to the back of the class, not looking at anyone, and sat on the bench against the wall. As teacher told us to take out our slates and practice our letters, I turned to them and smiled. A few days later, we're almost to school. When we smelled the smoke, we ran the rest of the way till we saw Miss Howard. Why, why, why? She was crying and shouted at the same time. She paced back and forth, staring at the flames. Folks came from everywhere, fetching pails of water and throwing them onto the burning schoolhouse. But nothing would stop the fire from swallowing it up. We were worn out and quiet, quite on the on, quiet on the walk home, thinking about Miss Howard. The fire, our school, took all the words from us. When we got back, I ran into Mama's arms and let myself cry long and hard. At least they got a little learning for the school burnt. Daddy said to Mama, "I think to make us both feel better." Mama didn't answer. I didn't either because we both knew that halfway to freedom feels like no freedom at all. Even though we didn't have a school, Mama told me to keep practicing. I read two books Miss Howard gave me over and over until I knew the words by heart. I read them to Paul and sometimes my mama. She wasn't too tired to listen. Are we going to go back to school? I kept asking her 
uh, I kept asking her, she would say, things take time, Lizzie. You got to be patient. I wonder if being patient means to just keep waiting until you don't want it anymore. On the first day, Mama woke us, woke, on the first warm day, Mama woke us at dawn. Hurry up now. Get yourselves washed and dressed. We're going to walk over to that school and check out Miss, check on Miss Howard. See how she holding up. Mama said, first we heard the hammering and sawing. Then we heard the voices loud and laughing. Around the bend, we saw preacher, Mr. Hodges, and his boys too. Looked like everybody bought whatever they had. Wood, nails, saws. Paul and I ran ahead of Mama to see Miss Howard. She was spreading a quilt on the grass in front of our burn down school. A few of the spelling books were there, black around the edges, and a couple of slates too. Paul, Lizzie, come and join us. I'm just getting ready to start today's lesson, she said, wave, waving us over. Behind Miss Howard, where the old school was, we saw Daddy standing tall and proud, a hammer in his hand. When he hugged, when we hugged him, we breathed in a smell of fresh cut wood, raw and sweet. Daddy, you're helping build the school, I asked. No, Lizzie. We're all helping to build Freedom's School. The end. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this particular book on Freedom School. Um, very interesting. We should value our education. It's important. As we celebrate Black History Month, our theme is our struggle, our walk, our climb. And we can see that these individuals had a struggle. They walked it through and they climbed to success. So you guys keep doing your best. Keep being the best you that you can be. And you have a great rest of